So the interesting thing with posture governance is that it spans across the whole API lifecycle. Right? When we talk about building API standards, these are standards that we have to keep in keep in mind from you know how we design an API, how we architect it and deploy it, how we configure our API gateways, how we test an API, and ultimately how do we monitor and operationalize the API. Hi, this is your Supreme Bhartia, and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Nick Rago, field city of salt security. Nick, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here, Swap. I appreciate it. And today we are going to talk about API posture, governance engine, and of course, uh, in general security, API security, and salt. So first, let's talk a bit about uh, the salt security API production platform. A lot of folks know us as really, I'd say, the, the founders or the godfathers of the API security space. We, uh, uh, a while ago now, we've come to the market basically saying, hey, th there's a wave coming, there's a problem coming, we need to get in front of it. Uh, and uh, at the end of the day, we're here really to help organizations embrace APIs and and uh, reduce risk. You know, uh, embark on their API first journey and and and, and take in all the goodness of APIs and innovate with them, but uh, do it uh, with as little risk as possible. We, we say we help organizations foster secure API driven success. At the end of the day, so. Uh, the, the the message has been the same. The journey has changed because you know things change over time. So as we have uh, matured and uh, as new risks have developed, as organizations have changed how they built and deploy and uh, use APIs, so so true is uh, also how we have to defend them. So uh, we're really excited about the latest announcements that we have that uh, have really, uh, uh, really showcase a lot of the changes that we've actually made in the platform to help defend against a lot of these emerging threats. So let's talk about the new, you know, advancements. And of course, uh, today's theme is around API posture governance engine. So let's talk about that. I don't think anybody at this point would debate that every organization's on this API first journey, whether they know about it or whether they're aware of it or not. And APIs have really been, they become the nervous system to all the applications that we all rely on, businesses and applications rely on daily. And many organizations are struggling with this notion of APIs sprawling or proliferating all around their business. And one of the big things from an organizational standpoint is we've seen in the past that uh, that uh, organizations uh, were first getting awareness that, that there were problems from an API security standpoint, there was risk associated with them. We saw in the last couple of years a lot of security organizations really start to 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 move their focus there, um, and start to acquire tools to help reduce risk. What organizations are finding out really have found out over the last year or so is that this isn't a tool problem; it really has been more of a strategy problem. And so, from a platform perspective, that was one of the things that we wanted to help our customers with to help address to help address uh, this uh, this notion of how do I build a strategy that's sort of, that's going to help me reduce risk now, but also ensure that everything I'm building down the line that I trust and that I'm reducing my risk. And, I, and again, the ultimate goal of having the ability to embrace all the greatness things, all the greatness that uh, transformation, modernization, and API first has to offer. So it's interesting from a security standpoint, API security is followed in this, the, the footprints are pretty similar than we to what we saw with the cloud migration, moving from on-premise workloads to, uh, to the cloud. And a lot of organizations have embarked on this API first journey and proliferated APIs throughout their organization uh, without any safety guardrails in place. I, I liken it to, you know, starting, you know, racing, uh, racing uh, race cars down a mountainside uh, road uh, that's uh, along a cliff with no guardrails. <laughs> so I think that's a it's a pretty good metaphor for a lot uh, a lot of organizations. And and the security reaction has been pretty um, it's been pretty reactive, right? It, it it there has been not really much from a proactive standpoint uh, in building a security strategy to reduce risk. And when I would talk to a lot of organizations, CISOs, and a lot of the the lifecycle stakeholders. Uh, related to API development and deployment, a lot of organizations, I would ask them first, are APIs putting you at risk? Do you even know where your APIs are? Do you know what they're doing? Do you trust your APIs? And most importantly, do you have you set that standard of good? Do you know what is a good API? And I would ask, you know, the different stakeholders and the different personas, and I would get different answers. 
And you know that is a you know a major fundamental problem. If we're not if from design to deployment we're not all in sync, especially in this distributed world that with uh, that we all live in, then we are inviting ourselves to to some big uh, big uh, problems down down the line. So that was the essence of uh, really introducing posture governance to the APIs uh, API security space. I feel like. In the past, a lot of organizations just kind of jumped over this, um, and uh, it, it really is a crucial part for a lot of organizations. So, in this particular release, we wanted to address that for uh, for our customers. When we look at API posture governance engine, what kind of personas are going to benefit from it, and what kind of benefits they will see? So, the interesting thing with posture governance is that it spans across the whole API lifecycle. Right? When we talk about building API standards. These are standards that we have to keep in keep in mind from you know how we design an API, how we architect it and deploy it, how we configure our API gateways, how we test an API, and ultimately how do we monitor and operationalize the API. I'll give you an example. One simple standard an organization could have could be something as simple as anytime we write an API or deploy an API that leverages a, or uses a user ID, that user ID has to be in UUID format. It has to be in some non-guessable format. When I talk to organizations, they would basically say, hey, we wrote that down somewhere, but I'm not sure if the developers are using it. I'm not sure if the testers are testing for it, and I have no way to assess for it. So again, this is a standard that is, from a posture governance and a policy uh, standpoint, these standards are important because they, they actually impact every persona. Right Now, as a developer, I know when I'm designing the API exactly what the security standard is, is, is uh, expected of me. If I'm developing it, especially the, this new wave that we're seeing with, um, uh, with AI generated code, we need guardrails and LLMs that the AI can actually use to know what's good code and what's bad code. You know, how should I be programming this? Uh, when I'm testing it, I should be testing for standards. Much too often we're seeing organizations test for known bad getting better with API security, but no one's really testing the APIs, the standards that organizations are starting to put in place. And again, this also impacts the people that the architects that are that are de deploying the API gateways and and uh, SecOps in terms of what we should be monitoring and how I should be assessing um, the uh, the APIs in production. Last year, we had a lot of discussions with SALT uh, and the kind of landscape for API attacks are not only increasing, but they are also becoming modern. They are getting sophisticated with Gen AI. We are also seeing new kind of, talk a bit about how in 2024, how do you see this whole API attack landscape evolving and how organizations can protect themselves? Of course, tools are there, but do you think tools are enough? Or I'm talking about the cultural aspect that where they need to build some kind of processes, practices also, uh, to take better advantages of these tools. I think we were too tool and checkbox dependent before. <laughs> so I think that was a, you know, that was the, one of the major problems. And I think even from from the salt security standpoint, when we came into the, the marketplace, we were really focused primarily on the runtime piece, those sophisticated API attacks, the low and slow, the business logic attacks, the things that were getting through the traditional web defenses that most organizations you know, ha are initially deploying to help secure their APIs today. The interesting thing, those problems, when you look at a lot of the attack types that have taken place over the last few years, the attacks are not very sophisticated. The behaviors are not very sophisticated. There's exceptions to that. But for the most part, we're seeing attack types or breaches where the barrier to breach are really, really low. And that was just screaming that, listen, we have a we have a foundational issue. We have a governance issue here we also have to address. So to reduce risk, we effectively have to deal with that first and then graduate to more of the behavioral threat detection and uh, a lot of the sophisticated attacks that we're seeing today. So from it's interesting, from an attack and a breach standpoint, uh, we were seeing those, those uh, uh, non-sophisticated breaches actually be the, the majority of breaches that are taking place. So that's why for us, the focus uh, this year has has been really let's put a strategy in place for organizations. Let's guide them on the API security journey. Let's first take them down that API uh, posture governance 
you know, how to, how do I build that program? Let's take them down that path of the journey, that leg of the journey first. And then let's help them graduate to the next leg of the journey, which really is behavioral threat protection. Because at the end of the day, having a good posture governance framework actually impacts how well you are from a behavioral threat protection standpoint. And, and when I say posture governance, I'm also not just talking about standards. In my mind, when I talk about posture governance and building a framework, discovery is a, a, a huge part of that. It's still an, an issue for organizations is the, is the notion of understanding, not just do I have an API, because another interesting fact about a lot of the API breaches that we're seeing is that most of the API breaches that, that you'd see in the press or that we're finding in the wild are against API assets that an organization already know about. Yes, there are some breaches and examples of things that are getting out there, shadow endpoints that that threat actors have taken advantage of, but the vast majority of breaches are, are against API assets that an organization is already well aware of. So discovery needs to get deeper. And so that's part of this partial governance program. It's it's understanding here are my APIs, sure, this is this is the attack surface, but what are they doing? Who owns them? What's their business function? What data in motion is associated with them? All of this are important, all of these are important attributes and characteristics. Again, helps you build the standard, helps you identify and do, you know, a, a new thing that organizations are doing is something called, um, we've heard of threat hunting. A lot of organizations are now moving the, down the path with APIs, doing something called risk hunting, you know, delving into their API intelligence and understanding, okay, what APIs are putting me at risk? How do I build a program to actually protect against, protect against these risks in the future? And taking that intelligence and applying it to behavioral threat protection. Uh, because on the behavioral threat protection side, Quite honestly, that is a very, very difficult, uh, that's a very, very difficult uh, thing to do is to understand the intent of any type of the user behind any type of anomalous activity. Uh, some of the metrics that we have over here and in the, the research that we've done is is pretty staggering, 0.25%. That's, I'm sorry, 0.025% of anomalous activity, of anomalies that you would see in the wild are actually malicious intent based anomalies. So for a lot of organizations, behavioral threat protection is more than just deciding and determining and detecting if I have some type of behavioral anomaly. It's important to detect the intent behind that anomaly. And a good posture governance foundation, having all that intelligence, that is a, a key component to helping you make those decisions and uh, you know, sort of feeding the ML and the AI to help assist in that. I want to kind of understand the API governance part. Uh, talk a bit about what it means and how critical is it for organizations' security posture. Of course, it will be some of the reputations that you talked about when you talk to the, the, the personas, but let's just talk about that aspect. There's a reason why we're calling this part of the product in the engine a, a, a posture governance engine or you know the posture governance leg of your API risk reduction journey and not posture management. So that, I think that's one distinction to kind of clear up. So posture management is a subset of posture governance, right? It is the assessment and enforcement of the standards and policies that you've actually put in your posture framework. We're helping organizations build that framework. So from a governance standpoint, it's the notion of uh, my cloud, my cloud uh, governance committee sitting in a room or my data regulation committee sitting, uh, sitting in a room, coming up with standards and then bringing those standards to life, right? So putting law in in putting law in essentially into effect that so that's i think the first thing to to keep in mind when we're talking about posture governance it's this notion of building a framework of standards that then gets applied assessed and enforced throughout a whole uh, the api's whole life cycle now we are at the beginning of 2024 of course there are a lot of things that you folks are working on and you cannot talk about it at this point we'll talk about it when it's ready but just give us a glimpse what are the other things that salt is working on that we can expect from the company it also kind of depends on how you're seeing the whole api security landscape evolving yeah one of the the big things especially you know on this topic of uh, api posture governance is that organizations Pretty much every large enterprise that I'm talking to are, are telling me they're, this is the phase that they're in right now. We're meeting, we're talking, we're building these standards right now. The first question I typically get asked when I'm having this conversation is, can you help me? <laughs> you see a lot. We have a lot of customers. We've analyzed trillions of API calls over the last several years uh, from a security perspective. Can you help me? So one of the things that is very important to us this year is making sure from a framework perspective with this posture governance engine that we are not giving our customers an empty canvas. 
depending on the vertical, the type of data that they, the type of data types that they uh, that they're handling uh, related to their business, the type of uh, regulations that are related to them and their business. These are things that are elements that we want to help guide our customers with. And, and also there's, there's a network effect here, right? How, you know, benchmarking myself against how another, uh, another company in my particular vertical is building their standards. So I want to take, you know, the knowledge of everybody, the sum of, the sum of knowledge of everybody and apply it and help apply it to myself. So that's an important piece for us is to help organizations, not just to pro- provide them, hey, here's the, here's the, here's what the journey looks like. And here's a technology to help you, but actually have technology that's going to, again, literally guide them on that journey, giving them, you know, giving those, giving them the templates so they're not starting with that, uh, that blank canvas. The, the other part is you mentioned before is, you know, and I mentioned also that there, the attacks that we're seeing out there, they are getting more sophisticated. While by number, many of the attacks and the breaches that we're seeing are low barriers to breach. The sophisticated attacks are getting much more sophisticated. We're seeing campaigns with first legs or first phases of social engineering. And once I'm inside or I get access to a privileged API key, it's very, very difficult to discern malicious intent there. So again, we're going to continue our lead in the industry on the behavioral threat protection side. We've built a technology that as was the first in the industry to, to, to leverage ML and AI to learn behaviors to have a really, really sophisticated set of uh, models that we're using to not just find anomalies, but to actually discern malicious intent. And again, that's something that we're not going to take our foot off the gas with. That's that's an important element of API security. Um, again, but for us, it, it it really is helping organizations on that first leg, just get the foundations in place to 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 really help propel the uh, their their risk reduction. Nick, thank you so much for taking time out today and, of course, talk about uh, this announcement, uh, API Governance. Uh, thank you so much for all those great insights. And as well, I'd like to check with you again. So thank you. I appreciate I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you.